Hello, good afternoon and welcome, or good morning or good evening, depending on where the world you are. One day, Barbara, we will take over the world. We certainly will, Matthew. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but today, welcome to the first official episode of the Two Dyspraxics YouTube channel. Uh, we are indeed the Two Dyspraxics. I, I am Matthew Munson. And I'm Barbara Neal. Um, and we do have an honorary third dyspraxic today in the microphone you see. We're testing some new technology today, so please, please, we hope it works. Yeah, we um, do, and there's no holding us back if this no. works. No, no, <laughs> we, the world is our oyster, or more ask of our choice, I suppose. Um, so today we're going to be talking about transport uh, and so on. This kind of it came up from um, a recent... Uh, trip we made to London. Um, Barbara's going to take up the story at that point a little bit. Yeah, it was really nice actually because we got to meet Tom, who's a great supporter of ours, and he's dyspraxic as well. So he was our honorary third dyspraxic that day. We had a fantastic day in London, um, but we did have the odd, I suppose, sort of fairly predictable mishap where um, we got separated from each other on the tube, mm -hmm. which was bound to happen at some point, I think. Heart-stopping, though, wasn't it? It was, yeah, it was quite worrying. Barbara and I got onto the onto the tube, and I'd gone on first, and Barbara came behind me, and we both turned and just saw the door closing behind Tom, and, and bless him, Tom, not having had spent much time in London, didn't really know the tube network, um, and I think both of us had a sort of a mutual heart attack, didn't we, when it we was, yeah, got wet into the... It was worrying. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, um, we, we did kind of develop tips though, didn't we? Kind we of all did. you did after you gave it some thought. Yes, because um, it was worrying because we didn't, we didn't know whether Tom would go on somewhere else or try and catch us up or quite what would happen. So um, after that particular episode, it did give me some food for thought and I thought that what we should do any time that we go to London or any time anybody goes to London for that matter, if they're travelling on the tube, if you get separated from your fellow passengers because... Um, one of you, say there are two of you, one of you gets on the train and the other one doesn't, is left on the platform, which is what happened with us, then the best thing to do is the one who gets on the train just gets off at the next stop and just waits there on the platform. Then whoever didn't get on the train gets on the next one that comes along because they're very frequent, they're every two or three minutes, and then get off also at the next stop. And then you'll both be on the same platform, you can be reunited with no problem at all. I, I, remem I remember... I'm not that experienced. I mean, I know you are, but I'm more experienced on the on the train trip than I am. But going up to London, kind of for the first time for me alone, was back. I think a couple of years ago when when you and I first met. Yeah. Oh, was about two years ago. About that, yeah. Ish. Um, because we we met each other for a couple of years, and going up to London the first time, um, we'd arranged to have a, a meeting with a couple of other sort of fellow dyspraxics, mm -hmm. and I I, I got up on my train line, Barbara got up on her train line, and Barbara's train kind of got caught in. It uh, broke what, what down. Happened? It broke down. Oh yeah, not that's right. far away from where I live, <laughs> ironically, and uh, so I had to sit there on the train, the broken down train, for four hours. Yeah, well, yeah, you were sat there for ages, <laughs> weren't yeah, you? It, wasn't nice. it was. I mean, it was awful for Barbara. I mean, I, I, I felt awful because obviously we'd spoken by phone to sort of say, okay, you're you're stuck there, and I was in London Victoria train station, which is a huge, vast train station. And I've never been at that point. I don't been in London by myself at all. I always been with people, and I, I was too underconfident to go from where I was to the place where we all arranged to meet. I would arranged to meet like Bob at London Victoria, so that then I could fo sort of follow in your footsteps along to the, the meeting yeah. place. And and I yeah, I mean I, I don't mind. I was terrified. I was because it's a busy place. The tube is traditionally very just manic. I, I mean, there's no way on, on this earth I could have used the tube at that point by myself. So I, I kind of went for a walk around the tube station, uh, train station, heard from Barbara. She was, there was no hope for Barbara for another three or four hours. We knew <laughs> it was going to take forever. So I ended up just walking through London. I just thought, you know what, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'd never met another dyspraxic person at all at that point. You, you were my first dyspraxic person that I'd met. Um, so I thought, no, I'm going to meet, I'm going to meet Barbara, you know, so I can meet another dyspraxic person. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to wait for her. So I just kept walking. I ended up in um, uh, Westminster by Houses of Parliament. And I ended up taking a tour of the Houses of Parliament, as you do on a random Saturday. Um, and, and thankfully, then, by the time I'd finished this tour, and Barbara came came out and, and got into the station we finally met. But I remember... For about ten minutes. For about ten minutes. And then my <laughs> train was going. And then I kind of got on the train back to, to that. Because I think, I think my brain had just at that point that I can't, you know, can't take anymore. Yeah. It'd been so yeah. busy... I think probably a, uh, a subject for another blog is about kind of oversensitivity, hypersensitivity, and kind of audio stimulation and stuff. But yeah. and certainly, I felt very 
kind of drained and exhausted at that point, having spent four hours kind of just going around London waiting for, for Barbara. So it, it, it was a wonderful experience. And I think it taught me a lot that actually there's not as much to be frightened of as actually I thought so in my head. Yes, that makes sense. exactly. Yeah, it does. I mean, um, my experience of travelling in London is that when I was 19 and wasn't phased by anything at all, really, you know, because you're not at 19, you've sort of got past all the awful school days, which is another subject for another blog. Oh, absolutely. And, um, and I worked in London, so I was living in Maidstone, commuting to London every day, so I was thoroughly used to the tube, which, incidentally, I find incredibly easy to use because it is set out in a very logical, commonsensical way. So that's something else that um, I'm very keen on mm. doing is to make a kind of um, guide to using the tube yeah. for people with dyspraxia. Because, Absolutely. Because it is actually a lot less frightening than you might think. Mm. I, I think I certainly would have benefited from that perhaps two years ago um, because it was all, all about being packed in with those other people, being very hyper-stimulated, certainly which is a thing that some dyspraxia can, certainly I've felt at times, the hyper-stimulation. So it was a very intense experience for the first time when I went on the tube by myself which I think was a, a couple of times after going to London it was terrifying but afterwards I came away sort of buzzing I think I remember I think I rang you or something I think I did yeah. ring you and say Barbara yeah. I have to be on the tube by myself wow yes. I think I rang my mum first and then you you know that yeah. order just because it was such a big a big deal you know to it's, it. a, but, big, but it's, it's a major logical. achievement yeah it's a major achievement but it's actually when you when you actually take the plunge and do it mm. it's nowhere near as frightening as as you might think before you try it out for oh it. totally I, mean, I think the cheap thing i think trains are a slightly different kettle yeah, of fish trains are different <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean it's i mean you had a bit of a mis mission today didn't you um oh, barbara and i live yeah. a little way apart and coming down today barbara had a bit of a Mission of public was, transport. Yes, I did rather because um, well, first of all, it took me a long while to. I had to change trains and um, and it took me a while because there was quite a gap between the trains, so I had to wait around for a while. And and it's always um, I always feel slightly anxious at the thought of you know, am yeah. I getting on the right train? Is it going to divide up? Because they tend to do that sometimes mm. as well. You find yourself on the wrong. Yeah, are you, are, you, are, you, are you going in the right direction and once the train exactly. split? Yeah. I, I think that is a thing, isn't it? It's a, it's that anxiety because I think. Yeah. Well, a lot of dyspraxics do get quite a, a quite high level of anxiety, don't they, about yeah. doing new things because of yeah. I don't know, just perhaps the way. They... Not even necessarily new things, because certainly travelling on trains, I, I do still get that <coughs> to some to yeah. quite an extent, and I'm not, I can't really properly relax until I know I'm on the right train and I know I'm going exactly yeah. where I'm where I need to go. Oh, totally. And um, it's, well, so I, I can't relax at any point yeah. properly until I'm in that situation. So and today it really wasn't helped because we had this scrolling. Um, they called it digital Doris actually. On the did you did name? <laughs> did. Yeah, oh, so kept saying she's not doing. She's doing this. <laughs> misogynist. <laughs> I, but, um, I like that digital Doris. Yeah, they called it digital Doris, and it didn't help because that was broken. So, I, had, you know, I was sitting on a train bound for Margate, which was fine. I was meant to be, but it was meant to stop at um, uh, Canterbury, Canterbury West, Ramsgate, Ramsgate Broadstairs, and Margate. That's it. Yeah. And I wanted to get off at Broadstairs, so um, it said um, calling at Margate. So, oh, that's not right. It must be a fast train. And then the next digital Doris announcement was, um, oh. The next stop is Ebb's Fleet International, which I know is in the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> so I was totally confused, and it it turned out that Digital Doris had broken down. Mm. So, um, so all was clear then, and it was okay. But until that moment, I was getting quite panicky. I was yeah. thinking, well, okay, I'll go to Margate then, and I'll have to get the train back to Broadstairs. Mm. It was just. Um, and that's it. I, I tell you what, even I, even for me, I mean, I I use a train for because I don't drive. Which is a subject of another blog, um, I think definitely. Yeah, but I, yeah. at the moment, I don't, I don't drive, and so I use public transport for for work. Um, I travel between districts, and um, for my day job, that is not this side of things. Um, and and even now, if my train that I'm getting kind of goes outside the norm, I, I do feel, and I mean, I've been using the train for eighteen months on a weekly basis, and I still get nervous or kind of com confounded if we're going a different way to where we should be going yeah if that makes sense yeah. and i get really confused and i have to kind of make sure i'm really looking at the display board or the press one as i'd like to ask a human being yeah because there's nothing like asking yeah. a human being saying well look can you just tell me where i'm going because the screen you look at the screens in a cheap train station and it's always information that's coming on i mean when we, when we went to meet, meet tom and we were in king's cross mm -hmm. 
and we had about eight display boards we were trying to look at to try and find Tom's train from from where he he, he was coming from, and it was. My, it's so overwhelming. Yeah. You know, it really is overwhelming because there's all this information there and, and you're kind of thinking, first of all, there's the problem of trying to work out which train might he be on because the train didn't necessarily start its journey at his stop, yeah, at absolutely. his station. So, you know, there's all that kind of stuff going on and all of these boards to look at as well. And I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. You know, if you can ask, if you can find a helpful human yeah. being. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll say that's the thing because it, it's, it's finally the right person to ask, yeah. as you say, because, yeah, not everyone is... Is, is helpful but um, I think that's that the tip of the day is go to the information desk and hopefully definitely there'll be someone there to yeah help. I mean there's always an information desk because um, I've tried uh, coach travel recently I've discovered um, traveling on National Express and um, which can be a great thing to do because again once you're on the coach that's it you can relax you know mm. you can relax until you get to your destination so it's um, so that's pretty good but I'm not very good with bus stops, just finding out where the bus stop is yeah. and being sure I know where it is. and um, yeah, So that is something of um, the cause of anxiety as yeah, well. Definitely. But I, I think, f- for me, one thing I would say is, at some point, if, it doesn't matter what your severity, severity of dyspraxia is, but just go somewhere on the train, a few, even if it's a few stops, by yourself and... You know, you can email us, and we don't mind kind of talking it through with you. That's absolutely yeah. fine. Come get us through Facebook. And I honestly, I can remember the the feeling two years ago of being in London by myself, waiting for poor Barbara who got who got <laughs> caught on this broken down train. My first feeling was just sheer abject panic and fear. That was like almost overwhelming. But once I got past that and thought, do you know what? I'm gonna just give this a go and just walk somewhere that I've never been before and. What's the worst that can happen? There's signposts on the on the side of the road. Um, there's policemen around. So if I get lost, I can ask a policeman how do I go back to the train station. And out of that, I had such a brilliant day, and it gave me the confidence to go up again, subsequent to that, by myself and try the tube. And such, I, it felt so rewarding. It's you know, liberating. That. It, it, it's it is. Liberating, it's absolutely really liberating. Yeah. And 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 the fear goes. Yeah. I will say that the Most fear. Definitely. You, you know, sometimes you, you still get anxious if it doesn't go according to plan, and that's normal. It's yeah. fine to feel like that. Mm-hmm. But the the overwhelming kind of panic, oh, it goes so quickly, doesn't it? It does. And you can do a number of things to prepare. Like, for example, I'm always happy if I can buy my rail ticket in advance. Absolutely. So do that, you know, a couple yeah. of days in advance, because it doesn't matter which station you're going from. You can go to a train station. I mean, for example, I'm... Well, I, I did go from Maidstone as it happens, mm. but I went to Maidstone yesterday to get my ticket for today, and then I knew it was there. It was in my pocket. And, and, you, and okay. you can buy the train station, the, the ticket from any train station. Yes, so you, you don't have to be at the train station that you're you're travelling from. Exactly. Um, so you can do that in advance, and that takes some of the worry away. So you don't have to worry about will I get my ticket in time? Will I get the right route? Mm. So you don't have that to think about on the day that you're travelling. Yeah. As long as you remember where. You <laughs> that does help. Yeah, that does help. Uh, quite <laughs> useful. We can't necessarily help you with that, but um, I always, I always put mine in the same place every time. Though, so Certainly I have right. got. A, <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I'm always very organised about, actually. Yes. Ironically, yeah. um, so that's always quite good. But um, so try it. I say I say try it. Just give it a go. Even if you go one train stop and then walk home. You know, or get yeah. the bus home, or something like that. Or you could even get another train home as you they go back in oh. the opposite direction. <laughs> you could get another train home. Yes, you could, but that would be boring. Yes, it would. Yes, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that no. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. We don't do things easy. No. no. Okay, oh, fair point. You could do. You could get another train home, I suppose. Yeah. 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 But obviously, it it is a liberating feeling. I think I think Tom would agree because he Tom. I'm sure he would. Went from his home yeah. down to London by himself to meet us for the first mm-hmm. time, and I imagine he was quite anxious. Um, I'm thinking for him here, but I think he got a lot out of it when he travelled that. Well, it's it's certainly seemed that way. I mean, Tom, could you please? Type your response yes, here. A comment just, under the yeah, page, please, Tom. Under, under there. here. Yeah, just there. That'd be great. Right there, under Matthew's table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is my. This is my, This is actually my front room where we're recording this. Yeah. I should say. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you could do that, Tom, that would be lovely. Yeah. Thank you. And um, yeah, we certainly did have a cracking. Yeah, oh, we day did. Day, we did. We did. Apart from brilliant. losing him briefly. Apart from losing and then, and then Tom. losing you, we couldn't find you. Me. Yeah, yeah was, we, um, we panicked. But, but you're fine because you knew your way around the yeah. tube. So I, I wasn't worried no about problem. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean that in a nice way. I mean that in a nice way. 
<laughs> well, Barbara, I'm trying to read on. We're at 14 minutes and 56. Oh, my goodness. Our um, viewers will be bored stiff they, by now. Our viewers will be going, come on, we want our tea. Wrap this up. Wrap this up. Too. They'll be going yeah. like this. Yeah. Or, if, we, if we had a producer, our producer now would be going like that. I think we'd be off the air by now. Yeah. And Diane wouldn't put up with this, I'll tell you that. No, she wouldn't. No, Nick, was it this morning with Anne and Nick or whatever it is? Um, something no, like Fern that. And no, Phil, Fern and Phil, wasn't it? Phil. Fern and Phil. I they, those were the two who used to get the giggles. Yeah, like, they were the two. They're, they're like us. They're like us. Yeah. Well, not that we ever get giggles. Like us. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, don't we? No. No. Yeah, no. We're professionals. No. Uh, look out for the right. outtakes after the days and gents. There are a few to look at, I think. Already. Um, already. <laughs> the, and the day is young. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there'll be more. <laughs> but thank you for watching today. Um, hope it's been of use. Um, try train travel. Just try it and give it a go. It's Absolutely. not scary. And if you want to Facebook us or email us, because um, we have now an email account as well, um, details will be below here underneath. Yes. Um, so do drop us a line and we're more than happy to sort of talk you through it. And, and who knows, if you're near us, you might be able to come meet you someday. Yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, we're more than happy to take on the third on redispraxic for yeah. some of our ventures so um, Absolutely. You know, that's something we can certainly think about especially if you can hold a video camera oh definitely <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a bit much to walk and hold a video camera oh actually camera. that's true I'll ask you a lot there yeah, that's true <laughs> yeah. that's another discussion <laughs> but anyway thank you for watching and we will speak to you soon take care bye, bye.